Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, like fire. A terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. All right, welcome to The Advocate. Another week, but certainly not just another program. This one comes with plenty of source. Uche shakes things up by challenging, are we a nation without hope? I sincerely hope not. Sandra has had a revelation moment, and she wants to share her new vision with us, which is that the future is not female. To some, might say, before Uncle. Liberos is ready to break the table. He says, divided we stand. Some might strongly agree, just as some might disagree. So we might as well be divided on this one. Emeka is doing a stock take of sorts, and he queries, is the Nigerian stock market playing a magic trick on us? I'm certainly not under any illusions with my advocacy. I'm saying it directly as I know how. Hateful actions speak louder than hateful words. After the break. Actions certainly speak louder than words. Then infuse these said actions with hate, and we are talking amplified sound. So hateful actions speak louder than words. Nigeria is at worst crippled and at best a joke. There's nothing funnier than when a bunch of senators imagine that they should consider death penalty for use of what they term hate speech. For a while now, the Buhari regime, through the Ministry of Information and Culture, have been transfixed on this matter of hate speech. It seemed to be all they cared about. They were simply looking to shut down critics. It is just like how rice is a new fixation. Meanwhile, elections have turned ugly with killings and injury, with cheating and disregard for the will of voters. Borders close with resultant inflation. They spin lies about cars manufactured in Nigeria, which are actually made in China and rebadged here. These sideshows can only distract the poorly educated, which is sadly most of us. These lies, spins, and suppression are the ultimate instruments of hate. They are hateful actions, and they speak louder than hateful words. With 200 million Nigerians, I very much doubt that it is the citizenry that will engage in or propagate successfully hate speech. It can only come from the more organized and financed government and politicians. It is them that I send a warning and some advice. Change your ways. It is your disdain for the common man that could partially fuel hate speech. If you do not know it, the people are changing and the nation will undergo a revolution of ideas and ways and you will all be blown away, brooms, umbrellas and all. To avoid hateful action, one must avoid hateful thoughts. Genuine actions of love and compassion will propagate joy and peace. Think of good schools, hospitals, infrastructure improvement. Think of the people and the nation first. Get paid less. It's as easy as ABC. The problem is government, not the people. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would like to say <laughs> quite boldly that I don't believe we are living in a democracy. I don't even think we ever lived in a democracy. I think the way we are, this government is really for themselves. It's not for the people. Because every single thing they put in place seems to go against the people's wishes. Now, you've mentioned this hate speech. It's really because they're underperforming. In fact, they're not even performing. Let's not even talk about underperforming. So what do you then do? You shut everybody up. You tell them, you know what, if you say this, it's hate speech, yeah. we'll put you away. Why don't you just perform? Like you said, it's easy as mm. ABC. Clearly, these people don't go into government with um, the yeah. thought of being good and um, 
you know, doing things for the citizens. They're there for themselves. Yeah. So absolutely, I'm, I'm with you, Chuka. They are the ones inciting hate speech. They are the ones, in, not even hate speech, hate action, action, as you put it. And one of these days, something will change. Something yeah. will give. Because the dam, as far as I'm concerned, is about, about to break. To yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think that, um, you know, I'm in agreement. Um, you know, I was always say on this show, I think the fundamentals, the fundamental in my view with regards to uh, this particular hate speech or this attempt at mm. regulating speech is because, largely because, um, as you just said, governance um, is very distant from, from, from the people, from the government. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, if I agree with you, really, that the people who govern us, the politicians, currently politicians today, see this thing as really, it's, it's, it's a tool they want to use to mm. control what people say because um, they're, not this, they're not performing. They're not performing. Mm. And so this is their own tool. It's not for, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, mm. people say things mm. to each one another. This is not uh, a, a legislation or an instrument uh, with, that will be helpful to a Mecca and Chuka mm. or, or, or anyone. This is really the politicians who do not want people to be, to be able to say things mm -hmm. that will not favor them or exactly. things that they, are not, they don't want to be said. Mm. That's how I say it. Mm -hmm. yes. But largely, I think that um, the politicians see themselves as being different. It's almost like that um, GRA mentality. Mm. You know, when the <laughs> colonial people came, they went and built themselves nice houses in government reserved areas. Uh, when the British left, our politicians then went and lived in those places and now saw themselves as distant from, from, the, people. from, from the people. So they are secluded. So the people in, in the parliament see themselves as that. And I think that's really, so they're creating laws to create a barrier, a barricade, Correct, yes. to defend themselves mm -hmm. from us. Yes. And that's really how I see yeah. it. And I mean, what um, I think they are also trying to do is to create sort of like a one-party system whereby the critics are being silenced and yeah. you know they don't have a voice to Absolutely. speak out or to yeah. challenge whatsoever they're doing. Mm -hmm. And also, just like um, Chuka said, at this point in time, is this what we really yeah. need? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talking about hate, hate speech. I mean, mm -hmm. we are faced with situation of you know corruption and faced with election killing, and then you are trying to propagate. So I think this is just a misplaced priority, and the government is simply trying to chase shadows at this point in time, trying to divert the um, the, the populace their attention from what is currently happening mm -hmm. to chasing hate mm -hmm. speech mm -hmm. and. Fixing death penalty, <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. outrageous and That's really ridiculous. ridiculous. Because, first of all, the Constitution already states yeah. what should happen. Mm. We all have, we are guaranteed freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. You come in to introduce death penalty. For what? For what exactly? To what you, end? You, you see, uh, uh, briefly, like we have all agreed that mm. um, um, it's uh, the fear of underperformance. Mm. Uh, because this government came with so much promises, mm. so much hope. And I agree with you that um, action begets hate, hatred. Um, and if you talk about the action of this government, right from the opposition, they actually yes. you know, created hatred. Yes. They spread hatred. Yes, they did. They founded hatred in politics that mm -hmm. in 2015, a lot of people were scared that we might not see beyond 2015. Mm -hmm. And like Senator Abaribe once said, if we had this law in place from 2011 to 2015, Alaji Lai Mohammed would not be alive mm -hmm. today. today. Mm -hmm. If president, you remember the, also, yeah. the president also made some. After the election, yeah. one expected that, you know, being the president, whether for those that elected you and those that didn't elect you, you would unify and unite everybody because yes. the drums of war, the hatred that yes. you people created. Yes. But what did he do? So he said, I don't, I won't treat everybody the same mm. way. Exactly. 75, 97 and 5%. Mm. Yes. I don't know how that mathematics add to 100. Yeah. That's a topic <laughs> for another day. Yeah. As if that's not enough, um, his uh, media aid, told those that were criticizing the government, yes. he called them whalers. Mm. Yes. If that is not hatred, yes. I wonder that I wonder. would be. Yes. And so, with their inaction and non-performance, people now started calling out yes. all the promises. Yes. And mm -hmm. I agree, social media sometimes can be very irritating. Very irritating. But to now say that um, you will want to kill people yeah. for <laughs> criticizing. Yes. And this was the same government that came and said, I belong to nobody and mm. I belong to everybody. everybody. Yeah. But you have been selective so far. And if you are selective and you still don't want us 
to point out those I wonder in a society like ours where law regulates society, it is the law that should determine what hatred is. And we still have the law of defamation and libel. Yeah. Exactly. So if you feel that I have libeled you, you go to you court. Go to court. Yeah. Yeah. Simple as that. I mean, yes. I heard that the, the Senate, I mean, the, they don't actually, the House of Assembly, they don't have the right to even legislate on this hate speech. Yeah, is that yeah, true? The, the, these are, these uh, are not matters that are within the exclusive legislative mm. list. I see. These are residual matters. Yeah, okay. They're for states. Mm. Okay. And, and so, I wonder how they want to do this, because they would hide under Section 39, Sub 2, to say, well, um, that we can, from these powers, government can make laws to regulate speech. Right. But when the main, main clause of, of Section 39 okay. says you guarantee freedom of expression, but that this expression in some cases can be curtailed. Mm. But I now wonder how they will be able Can't to curtail. curtail. It how do you, <laughs> what do we determine the, what will amount to hate speech? Mm. I don't even think who it's been well defined. What is that speech? speech. Yes. I mean, yeah. so, so how do you... How who do, you will know? determine what is so hate speech? And even as we speak now, there are from 1999, you know, because once you're on death row, the governor need to consent before right. such person before. can be executed. Yes. From 1999 to date, no. No. not more than one governor has signed, yes. you know, yeah. warrant of execution. Yes. And, and so, because they also know that what is breeding all of this is the corruption that yeah. they all are involved in. Absolutely. Well, we keep speaking, though our words may be misunderstood. Ultimately, we want what's best for the majority. Ironically, Uche wants to provoke hope by challenging us to acknowledge the root causes of an apparently hopeless situation after the break. Is Nigeria a nation without hope? Over the weekend, we had two elections in Kogi and the other in Bayelsa. The associated hashtags were Kogi decides, Bayelsa decides, but I knew this was farthest from the truth. We already knew the results even before people thought of casting their votes. This isn't because we have such a well-performing government that the people would gladly vote them in, but because we knew, just as in the general elections of 2019, these elections would be decided by might, and as predicted, there was widespread violence, stealing of ballot boxes, and of course, killings. All the gains that were made in the Jonathan era on electoral reform appear to have well and truly disintegrated. I, like many who would normally encourage others to vote, have all but lost confidence in our electoral system. The system seems designed to fail since it denies the people their voice. And worse, those who venture out to exercise that right to vote can't guarantee that they, wouldn't be given, that they wouldn't be giving up their right to life in the process. Then, to add pepe to injury, the same government now wants to take away our right to free speech by proposing a hate speech bill. So our hands are tied at the polls and our voices are muted on social media, the only platform Nigerians have to escape their problems and vent their spleen. All this because we have a non-performing government that seems filled to the brim with greedy, corrupt career politicians who don't want us to tell them so, as this may cause us to unite and fight for our rights, or even fight for our democracy. Over the weekend, many tweeted that democracy in Nigeria has been murdered. Sadly, I'm inclined to agree. It appears that we, as a people, have refused to unite and insist on good govern governance due to our various motives or agendas. As a result, we feel like we have been bound and are about to be gagged with no hope in sight. Nigeria, is, is this the next level? Is this what we voted for? Anyway, irrespective of our background or allegiances, our common ground is that we must make our voice and vote count if we are to resuscitate the hope of our nation. We must unite under this fundamental purpose or we are mute witnesses to a sham democracy. Spot on. Mm. Um, wow. it, it was, um, I tell people it was um, really disgraceful um, that um, we, are, we call what we had over the weekend an election. In fact, it is so bad that a friend of mine called me and said, look, I think at this stage, INEC, the DSS and the police and APC should just call us 
and say a do election this is uh, the outcome yeah. and spare us all of this debt okay. bloodbath and waste of time because you saw what happened in Kogi and then you look at the numbers you look at the figures you look at the numbers of PVCs yeah. said to have been collected right. and it's far far less than the number of actual votes right. and yet we had introduced PVCs mm. to checkmate election yeah. rigging and you now begin to wonder and yet your president will congratulate the winner yeah. and say yes yeah, you did well mm. and so if you the losers should go to court I, I, I just came back from election petition tribunal so I know what happens there because it is a tall order Our electoral uh, laws do not permit yeah. all of this proof because you need to prove pulling unit by pulling unit for 180 days. That's a tall order to be almost impractical impossibility for you to do. And, and, and so, I, I think that the way we are going very soon, if care is not taken, people will no longer bother about waiting to go to tribunal. They would rather kill and mm. maim an election, okay. uh, an election day. Yeah. And a lot of people will not want to participate. We're already there. Yes. Absolutely. We're, we're, we're there. there. But it's just that it's done from one side, people with the, the, the might of government. Mm. Um, look, for me, I think, you know, just like you said, maybe that it's time for INEC just to say heads or tail, we'll t toss exactly. a coin, <laughs> and we'll just decide, yes. you know, who, who wins. Um, it's really shameful. Um, that we're at this stage. Um, I thought by now we'll have progress, but I wasn't expecting any miracle. Mm. Um, you saw the build up to the election, you saw all the things. I mean, uh, it was really sad to yeah. read in the press the IG of police said uh, they're fake policemen. So, how many, how many fake well, policemen if, if did you, you catch? Statement, <laughs> if you how many fake policemen before the election? Yeah. They said they've identified all the flashpoints, yeah. they've deployed full policemen mm. to all it's, of these areas. We saw videos and where. Then, on the yeah. day of election, all the policemen would stand that. that yeah. and, and we saw videos the of. Policemen of, were yeah. even used. Used and could not trucks. Yeah. Yeah. Police trucks packed. And then, and then the, the boys fake. come and they take the boxes, and they were just packed. They were looking there. And the same police helicopters were shooting and tear guys and, and live ammunition from, from, from police. It's really, and look. Then, and then they uh, set that you know, poor woman you know, a, a, a lie. This, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is state capture. This is where yeah, a true. democratic government or a government <laughs> that came in under institutions of democracy, elections, and so on and so forth, is using the same institutions, the judiciary, the same INEC, to subdue the, the to democracy. democracy. That is what's yeah. happening. So yeah. it's a capture of state. And like, like uh, uh, Sandra said earlier on, we're finding that our own democracy is being undermined you know, gradually. gradually. And we're getting to the point where you know, we, we don't fit the definition of, 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 democracy. of, of a democracy yeah. anymore. Not at all. Not because at all. The, the core principle is institutions, is, is, is rule of law. And is going, it's going, it, if someone like Shore has been granted bail, I mean, it's, it's amazing that even the car will overrun him if they release him. Just look at that. And it's Look at that reasoning. I mean, I don't know. I thought that was a joke, actually, when I read that. So I don't know. Is it that we're trying to scare majority of people with the hate speech bill, with arresting people? But I don't think that is sustainable. Because this, this, all of us, I mean, all of us here, we're old enough. We went through a bacha, we went through military yeah. dictatorship. Yeah. I don't think they're going, there's enough prisons uh, in Nigeria it to hold everyone. Yeah. So I think that ultimately, the sad thing is that it is also people like us who support some of these things. That's true. But, but, the, but I believe that the, the, the majority of Nigerians want a better life and do not want to see the system yeah, um, that, that, yeah. that it's about to come. Mm. Oh, it is sad that the last time we had something that was close to an election was um, as far back as 1993, maybe. And even the 19, even the most yes, yes, the A4, three, A4. Yes, the hope yeah. 93, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. then the June 12th mm -hmm. election, and, yeah. uh, you know, because over the from 1999 to date, our election keep getting worse. Mm. In 2015, a lot of people didn't the numbers of election petition rules mm. but the fact that it produced a desired result a lot of people they didn't complain didn't so come. we felt it was a huru even though yeah. we also introduced card readers at that time mm. the same outcome with the biasa election there were violence snatching of ballot boxes mm. but because it produced a, a desired result there was synergy between the two dominant yeah. parties so right. a lot of people felt oh kogi was worse it was just the same thing mm -hmm. remember my annoyance is the fact that yara dua was the president. He admitted yes. that an election that brought him into office was, was flawed. flawed. Yeah. 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 With what people are talking about in Kogi, 
I didn't expect Mr. President to, to say, oh, let yes, those that, let the losers go to court. To court. You yeah. still, at least I didn't appreciate the fact that people died. Nigerians yeah, died. died. People yeah. that yeah. you're supposed to look over died. And so yeah. for you to just, you know, wish it away and congratulate the man and yeah. say, ah, you, you know. yeah. and then when you talk, they'll say, it's because you don't like Buhari. Mm. Yeah. It's because you don't like, like APC. A, you or that one PDP or did it is. this way. So what's the change promise then if PDP did it this way and you have elevated it? Exactly. So yeah. what we have these days is not even something to be called election Mangu, because it's what guns and money, you know, decides yeah. election yes. in Nigeria. Mm. It's not so election. it is no. a selection I mean, process. It, it not, it's it's gonna, be, I like it. Guns, guns and money. Yeah. It's about power. It's yeah, about, yeah. about yeah. power. Yeah. So, so, so the whole thing is about, so, so that's why I say state capture. So everything they're doing, no one is doing it. The politicians are not doing it for the betterment of the yeah. average Nigerian. Yeah. They're doing no, it no, to all. consolidate power, yes. for power for the sake use of power. Guns, use money. Yeah. So they just want to be and excellency and, and minister mm. and president or whatever, just for the sake of power. Mm. And, yeah. and, 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 and that's why you find all of these things. So if you're really doing it for the benefit of health and education, I don't think anyone will go to this extent. Yeah, well, I, I for one, I will think twice next time when voting comes <laughs> around. Because, I, I mean, I just felt it was wasted, totally. <laughs> All right, OK. Not saying anything is an indulgence we can rarely afford these days. Sandra has quite a bit to say about the shape of gender equality and what the future holds after the break. Stay with us. Be slow to dismiss those crossroad moments in life when you get the opportunity to change direction. The future is not female. Globally, it's quite obvious that women have fewer opportunities than their male counterparts with regards to access to basic higher education, health care, jobs, economic participation, political representation and so on. This gender gap has led to numerous campaigns for the emancipation of the girl child. However, inasmuch as the fight is commendable, focusing on a particular sex may not all go well for us in the long run. What do I mean? Permit me to go on a road less traveled. And since I am so good a storyteller, I'd like to tell you of my once upon a time visit to the Nigerian prison, or the Nigerian Correctional Center as it's now being called. The visits that changed my perspective on gender balance and the world's approach to gender equity. What was supposed to be a harmless visit to inmates, lending a legal listening ear and ascertaining their general well-being, turned the mind shift, which I believe should be a topic to be talked about at tables. As expected, I, being a female advocate, interacted only with the female inmates, and when I was done with exhaustion my eyes accidentally glanced up the notice board at the waiting area. I will leave the fact of the total capacity of that particular prison being at 250 and the total number of inmates recorded at 840 as a topic for another discussion. What really caused an alarm in my mind's eye was the fact that the total number of male inmates were recorded at 824 as against that of females recorded at 16. I would now leave you to do the ratio. This brings me to my advocacy today. For once, let us approach this issue of gender equality from a different perspective. If our measures for gender balance are limited to girl child empowerment programs and women freedom conferences, then, I, then I'm afraid that our strategy might be skewed and unsustainable because it clearly begs the question. How far would we go on this path before we realize that attention needs to be given to the male child also? Is it not obvious that the average male child from a tender age is already laden with so much responsibility of being a man and yet so little guardians or mentorship is given as to how? This shocking neglect is handed down from one generation to another, little one that they just stated statistics. The zero focus and moral standards demanded from our men have led to crime rates being 98% male dominance. More dysfunctional marriages plagued by domestic violence and abuse meted out by the same men. More mentally deranged men forcing marriages on underaged girls and even the unwell fathers trading their daughters to men their age. I can go on and on. In truth, I am a girl advocate, 
And I say with every certainty that the girl child will never be free if education is centered on us alone, while the ones we shield ourselves from seek to scorn the girl activists. The future, I say, is not female. The future is both sexes. Yeah, uh, I, I want to a bit <laughs> disagree yeah. with you. Um, because maybe if um, both male and female in that um, correctional facility had been 824, 824, you probably would have felt OK. Because the society we live in, um, the, the focus had been too much on the man, the, the boy child, that you need to first and foremost elevate the girl child mentality of training the girl child to the level, at least a bit, to where the man child is. That patriarchal society, patriarchal society that we live in, so that people will understand. Take for example, if you're a girl now, and I'm, I, of course, a man, as a girl, we go for an interview. The first question would be, Madam, hope you won't get pregnant very soon. Mm -hmm. You know, for some organizations. So nobody will ask me whether I hope I won't get married very soon. And, and, and so for that kind of society, the attention, the focus mainly is on the man child. So let us also elevate the girl child to that level. But also where I now share the same view with you is, yes, if you want to train only the queen, you also need to train the king. Otherwise, you will have the slave marry the queen. I agree with you on that level. But that does not mean that we should in focusing we need extra care on the girl child the society we are in now otherwise if you now say let us make them equal they will never be at par what's basically but, spain playing out but liberals is yeah. there a problem with equality no 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 so you're saying the imbalance the imbalance is so much the gap is one thousand that you want to, to improve the woman first but, but, I, but you can't abandon the man no i'm not saying abandon no what you, no, you is, will just by what i'm not saying, that you want no. to abandon the man but naturally, you will in in, in no, no. when you concentrate too much Natura naturally the there's no even concentration it's just a drop in the ocean mm. naturally what you have now is like what one thousand to ten and and so what i am saying is that natural default the natural setting is the male child, the male child. And so, also, let there be that con con conscious effort to also raise the girl child. Until you get to a situation where you have 1,500, then we cannot begin to talk about the challenges and or on just focusing I'm sure, on the I'm girl sure child. has a, 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 <laughs> okay. a very yeah, different... Yeah, I'm, I'm positive. <laughs> I can see... Uh, no, I'm, I'm just actually listening because, I mean, I understand where Sandra is coming from, mm -hmm. you know, but I do feel somehow this advocacy is not necessarily quite for Nigeria per se, like, like yeah. I think I think it might be for more of a Western yeah, exactly. um, but nation. It's Nigeria. Because mm. in, I do, if, if as we're dealing with Nigeria here, I do agree with liberals that I think there's still, you know, to we have to bring the girl child up yeah. because it's still a very patriarchal uh, pa patriarchal society. But if we're talking about in the West, it's getting to the point now yeah. where those sort of statistics you were saying, I was actually surprised. I was thinking that's more like now in the West, like especially in America, like, you know, in the black areas in America and everything where, you know, they now don't have any real regard for the male child or mm. men. Everything mm. is really anti-men, anti-this, you know, uh, that, that sort of rhetoric that is being spewed but, all over the place. But she's like living, she just so, gave us a living statistic. I know, now. but I, I don't oh, know. Right, right now. Yeah. Okay, so right you now. are talking about the Western, you are mm. talking about the Western. As in that, that's what, what resonated with me when you. This is at now. October. Thank you. 2019. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, I have the fact or the total number of prison inmates. The total number of prison inmates as at October 2019 is at um, 74,000, 74,000 thereabouts. While the total number of male out of that 74,000 mm. is 72,699. Let, let me also shock you that if, if a man and a woman commit the same crime, mm. the likelihood that the woman get bailed first before the man exactly. is also very which high. Brings me, which okay. brings so, me... So there is some help for the woman. Yes, yes, yes there's some help. Me to, That's why you have some of those imbalances yeah. also. Which brings me to my advocacy, being that you said that there is so much focus on the male species. Yeah, it's, in, it's, our, default it's our default mode. I disagree. No, I disagree. Being that for me, I think that there is so much focus on the female species than the male. This is my reason. You see, when you go when you go online and check for um, women empowerment program, you see mm -hmm. 
thousands yeah. of mm. you know thousands of women em empowerment programs you see thousands of conferences you've been mm -hmm. hosted for for females alone yeah. how many do you see hosted well, let, 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 let me not, let me not bust now, your bubble let me but we don't, about, we don't we don't have time why i'm saying this you, you don't know do you know why you don't have ministry for men affair because every ministry is a men it's affair, a men affair yeah. So you now out of out of forty five ministry, mm -hmm. you create one mm. for women affairs mm. because in the other ministries the women don't even they've not elevated so them to struggle. So there are two different things here mm. in my perspective. Uh -huh. There's a there's a there's a political power empowerment being involved yeah. in decision making. Mm. But what she's saying I think is more uh, relatable with regards to the consequences, the real life yes. consequences. Of that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. You and I know um, education in the southeast. Um, male male child is very extremely low compared to to, to 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 women. So we have we're dealing with a real problem, and I think we need to address. I think her point needs to be. I I agree with her. Let's balance it. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm that's saying. I yeah. agree. To I agree. Fifty percent, yeah. but and not completely her because her point is to balance it. Yeah, because now the emphasis the emphasis is always on the man. Mm. So that's why you see all of these emphasis on women springing up everywhere. Mm. Differently. I think she's basically ringing the alarm. Sounding alarm. Okay, well, we've told you as we see it. Time for you to tell us how you see it. On Nigerians are all talk and no action. Simon Templar says, Again, the advocate has been able to hit the nail on the head in regards to every appropriate topic for discussion. I agree with the majority of the panel, but disagree with the legal gentleman that would be libelous, who advised Alhaji Atiku to not go to court. I appeal to your program to please continue this topic. Nigerians cannot wait on God when he has given tools to fix our problems. After all, when God chose David, he didn't sit down waiting to be spoon fed. He got up and faced Goliath and fought battles. On what rice got to do with it? Nutriman says, the panel should look at the bigger picture and we all have to stop this mentality of selling our resources for paper money at every opportunity. Instead, we should use our resources inward, first to augment ourselves in the area of health and environment. The border closure is a good idea and has multifaceted long-term benefits. On part of the people, Oluwa Joba Odisanya is cringing at Ikeni's use of a London slang and says, why would you say in it on national TV? It's a London slang, Ninja can copy, and then he uses the hashtag cringy. Oluwa Joba, is cringy not a London slang? Just having fun as we do. Keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook, Post TV Africa, hashtag the advocates ng or on twitter and instagram at plus tv africa hashtag the advocates ng to catch up with previous broadcasts go to www.plustvafrica.com slash the advocates don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel at plus tv africa after the break libras tables his advocacy and lets you be the judge so let me say in advance the jury is certainly out on this one. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this and that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, like fire. a terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Anyway, as is to provoke the debate, it's left for you, the listener, to judge. Nigeria divided, we stand. No nation can thrive under the present lopsided and deficient leadership structure currently called Nigeria. Even small and medium companies succeed greatly when responsibilities are divided and assigned for collective goals of the group. 
though with institutional checks and balances. The present arrangement in Nigeria will continue to breed mediocrity, disaffection, and mutual distrust because of the, it's our turn to rule mentality of why the region that lays the golden egg, or the economy, believes they should mount the side of governance, irrespective of qualification, it's anyone's rights provided you have school cell certificate anyway. Another region believes that by numerical numbers, they should be allowed to govern in perpetuity. It's the people's call in democracy also. Yet another region believes that their intellect should give them the matter of leadership, also a truism in a democratic setting. While another one believes majority of them who are highly mobile, Republican in nature, entrepreneurially driven and have attempted to secede but we are resisted to a bloody civil war that claimed millions of lives on both sides, consistently believe that they are being shortchanged in the entity called Nigeria because of the war. Even though they have most often shortchanged themselves when it comes to having a go at the highest office. Well, I leave you to be the judge of the genuineness of these calls. I don't even want to mention those in minority like you and I. You may want to ask, must everybody rule? If you ask me, now who I go ask? But remember, in Nigeria, when you rule, you disperse, disburse favor, even if your region doesn't benefit in terms of infrastructure. But at least you have taken a bite of the national cherry on their behalf. Some have argued that the nation was designed by the colonial masters to fail. But if I may ask, is 59 years not long enough to change whatever defective product the British gave us? The First Republic Nigerian seems to understand the regional ideological difference that existed from one region to the other. Hence, their refusal to foist a unifying system on us. All the regions were independent of one another, even though they collaborated in a lot of ways. But today, states can hardly pay salaries, except bailouts come from a benevolent federal government or president. The 1999 constitution is a schedule to decree 24, and yet it claims that in its preamble, we the people of Nigeria, that's a lie against itself anyway, one can argue that since we have assembly men and women that the preamble to the constitution have been fulfilled, can we truly call what we have election or selection? You'll be the judge of that too. Believing against all odds that the current federal unity or turn by turn arrangement will yield meaningful development in this country is a fruitless venture. Each region has its own cultural, traditional political leadership and religious peculiarity, which is unique to them individually. And I think they should each be allowed to look inward and tap into this trend constitutionally without seeking approval from a benevolent center. No wonder we're more united and progress better that when we are governed along divided lines of regionalism than now that we are governed in pretense as one united people, apart from when we play national football. My advocacy out of this turn by turn directionless leadership presently bedeviling this country is to divide the nation along regional borders and grant each region fiscal autonomy so that the Yoruba man can deal with his problem separately from the Hausa man, and the Igbo man who will also have to face and deal with their squarely. The fear of the minority can be allayed by aligning them with people of similar culture, tradition, and religion. Then the government at the center, which then will be less bogus and unattractive, can provide this other framework for the coexistence of the federation unit. That way, even though divided, we should stand stronger, more independent, but yet dependent on one another. I can't argue with any of that, Liboros, actually, so I'm just going to leave it there. I, I think this is perhaps, um, you, know, you know, the... Uh, the advocacy that I'm spiritually, <laughs> yeah. psychologically yeah. Yeah, attuned with. Yes. Yeah, this, this, this is we've said this before. Yeah. And what kind of country are we? And and this, this is this really is what our founders, founders of, of Nigeria, you know, advocated for then. Yeah. You know, the Awala was the Aziki was. This was the regional government that worked then. Yeah. It worked before it was truncated. And I think that if we go back to it, I think it will work for all of us. Why was it truncated, though? I mean, if it was working, who decided that, oh, yeah. we'll change things up? And, no, I mean, you, know. you, you had the military, you had, you, you had the, the, the disturbances. The, it was great. You had the disturbances in, in the 66 in the Western region, yeah. which, you know, Operation sort of wet, yeah. Oppression wet, yeah, wet, which yeah. led to a lot of things. And the military intervened. And you had the coup, the... the yeah, they invited the, the military. They invited the military. Yeah. The and then there was coup, a subsequent coup. And the oh. Kaduna and Minzog was coup. And then, of course, when the military works better by... Yeah, that's right, yes. from so the top. The, yes. the way, the nature of the military itself, when the military took over, it was inevitable that they had to create a unitary Federal. government. And you know, unfortunately, General J.T.U. Johnson Thomas Umunakwe Aguiyeronsi was killed for what we are 
for, for trying to unify Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. And yet today, the people that killed Aguero C for trying to unify an entity that shouldn't be operated under a unity system and a join and telling yeah. us that the best way to, to, stay to, together. to focus it's, is yeah. to stay together. Because when you have a gluten in the family, he insists that you eat together mm. because he knows he will eat more. <laughs> yes, yes, more. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's in this year, it seems like everybody is in agreement. Nobody wants to say anything else. No, but really, because mm. that's the way we can mm. move forward. Mm. Some is, people think is. that um, we'll be uh, we'll not be united. For me, football that's, will unite us. That's no, even because you know? even each region, like like that, 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 we are yeah. bringing yeah. something to the table. Have we don't have to be divided. Yes. divided. Yeah. Yeah. Strong and point. Exactly, mm. we'll have our strong point, and so. No one has it all, mm. and that's why we all need each other. Mm. You know, but allow us to develop, you know, at our own pace. At our own pace. Mm. The West were better in the First Republic. Do you know that the Obafemi Awolo University that was built in the First um, uh, Republic, till date that we have more money, we cannot build another yeah, one like that. Better universities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those Cut. days, yeah. it was pride as the they call it the largest university south of the Sahara. The of Sahara. Those today, were in the man. first republic, but mm. today we build mushroom universities. Mm. We call them um, citadels of learning. Mm. You know, so because there will be competition. Cocoa was developed in the West yeah. because they had to focus on not this attitude of everybody run to Abuja, you sit down. Absolutely. If you don't let us chop, make yes. we scatter around. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. imagine the fixation on rice. Mm. Uh, exactly. would have, the northern region would have been focused enough to deal yes. with rice. Yeah. They, without us, without all the other problems. Mm -hmm. And then they can come forward and trade rice with me. Exactly. Yes. Quite frankly. Yeah. Um, and so everything sort of has collapsed because of the unit, this unitary government. Um, I, I know that the reason why Nigerians have a penchant for wanting to be on top. Mm. And that's why we're not going to let go of the presidential system very easily, because it puts somebody on top, yes. although that somebody is with his group. Mm. Okay. So it puts a top. group on top. And that's what it's all about. So it's actually about when me and liberals will get to be the group on top, as opposed to, why don't we have a system where Emeka is looking after his corner, uh, Sandra looks after her corner, and somehow we meet at a table to discuss, mm. uh, you know. Quick question, though. So, um, you know, after this regionalization, as you've talked about, what becomes of the federal? Uh, it will be less attractive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like so. Switzerland, Switzerland runs such a canton. Yes. 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 So you have, this, the, you have the German side, you have the Italian side, you have yes. the French side. French side so yes. they run what they call cantons, which is a, a, it's like a confederation. Yes, yes. Uh, it, it is. is. Yeah. Yes. So you see have the, the Swiss government, government. which yes. looks after the military, the military and uh, foreign affairs. Yeah. Yeah. Foreign yeah. Foreign and they're foreign. not dabbling into But they're not dabbling into the, the, the fist. Uh, yeah. Don't you still think that all of this, you know, even though it's less attractive, but there is still something in there in the confederation? Well, there was always, I mean, well, yeah. It's in, it's in staying un, un, united, yeah. staying unified. Well, I don't, the way Nigeria is right now, the way I'm we are definitely ready for the us way we to, are. It is so bad go. now that INEC want to conduct election for local governments. Mm. It is that bad. Yeah. And, and so you ask yourself, let's not delude ourselves. Yes, we are Nigerian, but there are peculiarities to every region. Why don't we tap into those peculiarities, make the center less attractive, except you truly want to serve. That's what takes you there. That's yeah. what takes you there, yes. But now that, because a situation where the center will collect everything, everything and share to everybody, like, you know, a godfather kind of thing, it becomes very difficult for anybody to truly want to work. Yeah, well. Okay. Well, we appreciate that we may well have to give you some time to ponder this advocacy. We look forward to your verdict, but in the meantime, America suggests that we have been for nine by stock market people after the break. I can't wait to listen. <laughs> You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. A scam only works if you're oblivious to it. The magic of the Nigerian stock market. It's more like the more you look, the less you see. With the bank reforms that Professor Chikuma Soludo instituted, resulting in a recapitulation of banks, with almost all of them going public, there was this scramble, indeed almost a frenzy, to buy shares of banks and newly minted publicly quoted companies on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. I remember at that time, the scramble to acquire bank shares in the early to mid 2000s. So many people lost their shares, the shares on their back as they were sold properties, mortgage assets to buy shares that are now worth pennies. Indeed, on a personal note, 
My wife and I also caught the bug and we joined the race. No one wanted to be left out of the promise of future prosperity. We even bought shares for Ifechi, our daughter then, who was less than six months old at the time. We had high hopes. I remember we spent, I think, well over six million at that time to buy various bank shares. Today, the entire portfolio is worth less than a fraction of the amount invested. I think I, I just did the calculation. It's actually less than 500,000, the whole thing. Um, so it's not even worth the paper on which it's printed. The reality that Mbaz went through were not the only ones that lost out. In fact, it would seem that the entire spectrum of Nigerian middle class at that time probably got scammed. Unless you were one of the very few people on the other side of the divide, the smart stockbrokers and insiders who knew that this was all a bubble and quickly sold at the artificially inseminated high stock prices and bought homes on the island and some even offshore in Atlanta and Toronto. I'm not naming some of my friends. They know themselves when they see this. At the end of the banking reforms, we had newly minted millionaires and billionaires, the birth of new money. However, it's important to note that I'm not saying that everything is 419, but it's important to know that the stock market, it's called a market. So where trading of stocks and shares happen, the forces of demand and supply should happen, where buyers and sellers are free to enter and leave. The issue for me is, however, the absence of a strong regulatory oversight of the market by the Stock Exchange and the Securities and Exchange Commission. So over time, they've not done very well at this job. But back then, I tell you this, some of the shares even now should have been delisted because a lot of the shares continually went into negative, but yet some of them still remain. Um, so we have very poor corporate governance. We have a lot of insider trading that's going on. Shareholder value is not considered as an index. No CEO of a major corporation in Nigeria today is measured by stock market price or gains. And this is not a, a, it's seen as a measure of leadership performance, which means more often than not, common stockholders are left with the short end of the stick, always. The fact remains that a serious interrogation of what went on during those crazy times never happened. No one has really interrogated what, what happened then. And it hasn't happened even now. What were the indices that were used to arrive at those ridiculous share prices? Some went as high as 60 naira a share, remember? Who monitored the process? It will appear now that the entire system was rigged against the majority of middle class, who were financial illiterate. And some of us still are not very good at knowing the math around stock market. And all of us were gullible, hungry, and desperate to join the new financial prosperity train. The system remains the way it is, even till today. But the NSC and the SEC needs to step off its regulatory oversight and do more in terms of financial investment education and instituting proper corporate governance. All over the world, people, especially the people within the middle class, look up to the stock market as a somewhat safe destination to pack their retirement savings. I don't think this is the same in Nigeria. Yeah. You're spot on. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, Ed, even during that uh, stock um, market boom, mm. um, I was lucky because I spoke with um, somebody who was a banker and he said, look, he called it voodoo economy. Mm. He said, my yeah, brother, this right. is voodoo economy. Mm. What is happening is that banks will give you a loan to subscribe to their shares. Then the moment the shares are, shares are by subscribes, the first of market and uh, demand and supply. Yeah. So the price would naturally go up. So they say, oh, the shares are oversubscribed, and then it goes up. And that's very soon. They will all come down. Yeah. Crash. So I just kept my 20,000 Naira then that I wanted to invest. Yeah. So since that time, I took you know, my time to continually monitor. And there was one matter I handled with one of the banks, too. The lady took a loan from the bank, mortgaged her house, and bought shares. When the shares were crashing at 30 million, she said, look, sell. Let me have my money. They said, no, madam, just hold on, just hold on. Only for that same share to come down as low as three, mil three million, yes. They now say, yes, madam, I want to take over your property. Mm -hmm. You know, because, and she said, at the point I asked you to sell, I gave you instruction letters, but you didn't sell. Now you want to take over my property. Mm -hmm. Well, somewhere we're able to meet at a, 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 a middle ground, and then, you know, she paid some money and, you know. So all of the, even now, recently, um, uh, late, um, uh, Boyo, he just died, yeah. raised also the so. genuine concern yeah. on the FDIs. You know, when you, they send you dollars from abroad, 
you collect naira here, they no longer give you dollars. But he's asking the he asked a major question: mm -hmm. the dollars, where is it going? Where to? Is yeah. it going That's to another it? area also we need to look at. Yeah, I mean, I have to come in here because um, during that time I was actually, you know, a stockbroker. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So I must say that, to be honest, I really do feel that you lot were those of you that Scott. weren't on the inside were kind of like hung out to dry because you really didn't know what was yeah. necessarily going on in the market. Um, I, one problem I have with Nigeria is that financials don't mean anything. Thing. You know, you're really supposed to use the financials in order to decide, yeah. you know, how strong the stock is and that sort of thing. But here, it really doesn't matter. You see all manner of funny stocks that, like you said, should have been delisted a long time ago. They're still hanging around. Um, I know I bought because of, I was on the inside. Mm, <laughs> you know, okay. you I, I, yeah, so I was able to buy shares and also know when to let go of them. But I just wanted wow. to tell you an interesting story about um, a lady that worked in Zenith Bank um, at the time. She... Obviously, I eventually worked out what she was doing. You know, she was producing millions and millions of naira, saying I should buy stock here, buy stock there and everything. So I bought the stock. But then unfortunately for her, um, prices started to crash. And she was now frantically saying sell, sell, sell. But selling depends on the market. Buyer, yeah. Buyer, yeah. So. Are there people to buy? So we couldn't even sell the stock. So from, I think she had about 10 million, went to 7 million, went to 5 million, and she was just watching her life drain from her. Why? Because she had taken clients' money and used it to invest yes, in the stock yes. market, so yeah, okay. hoping that she, the first time she, she did back. it, she made a profit. The second time she did it, that was it. No. And, and I think she pretty much lost her job at that point. So yes, you know, I really do think that we need to get to a point where the financials mean something because mm. if otherwise we are just gambling i mean yeah. it's really it's a pointless yeah, we're, market we're mds are judged by the range yeah. rovers mm. the driver and yeah. the that, value you know, so, yeah. if, so if you look at if you look at apple for example tim cook he, his his salary is dependent on the share price movement okay. so if in fact any ceo on wall street if for three quarters your share drops you probably will leave the business they will fire you your yes. board will fire you yeah. but in nigeria stocks I mean, drop anything. And you're still there for yeah, 10 years, for 20 years, and you're, you're still listed, living, and you're still living large. Still living and meanwhile, right. we that bought the stock, we are, we, we are more, we're impoverished. Meanwhile, you, you, you are doing well. I, it just doesn't make sense yeah. to me. I remember there was a chairman, chairman managing director of Lever Brothers. Um, that's Nigerian Lever Brothers. Mm. And um, I remember that time, Lever Brothers shares went up to about 60 Naira, when shares would probably be normally about mm. 15. It was unbelievable. It was either this guy was a genius or a scammer. And so he left, as soon as he left, the company the next year was in serious trouble. So by the time the annual reports were ready, it was clear that that couldn't have been the company last year. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's when I knew that the stock market was going to crash. You know, I, I don't say the name of the particular IMD, but I'm sure uh, if you don't know, you will know. Yeah, you know, you can find <laughs> if out. You know, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and you will find out. At this, at this point, you mentioned the Security and Exchange Commission. Yeah. And so one wonders what were they doing at this point? What were they doing the, the, at the point? They, they were in on it. They were in on it. They were in on it. Because the stock exchange, they were all in on it. This is the corruption we talk yeah. about. Once you're able to grease, I mean, companies or banks with shares shouldn't be listed on the stock exchange markets. So we're being listed simply because you could grease a few palms and then your stock just... Sandra, and like, like, gullible like, Nigerians. Yes. They, I, 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 I'm I, among the gullible yeah, guys. Okay. Last week, I said something. I said, in America, under the law, everything is, prohib is permitted except those that are uh, prohibited. prohibited in in uh, Britain under the law everything is prohibited except, except those that are permitted mm -hmm. but in Nigeria everything is permitted Inter including Inter those Inter that are Inter prohibited, Inter prohibited. Inter and, and so all of these regulate, mm -hmm. uh, regulatory agencies and the rest sometimes why people lobby to get to these places is that so that all you know what's oversight in Nigeria you get there yes. so I found the fault so okay where's my own insight and the moment you get yours, you look the other way. Yeah. And so that's basically Correct. what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why nobody will get, even if you're fired because your company came crashing, yes. nobody will prosecute you. Correct. Well, like, you I'm, just I'm sorry that you're, you're... No, no, no. I said, because, you know... <laughs> next time I'm coming, you, you I'll show you. You, probably you, know, you were doing here. the right thing. <laughs> because, like, in, in more developed society, you're, so, you're not supposed to just go into the market and pull out, go in and pull out. Right. You know, Emeka was investing... I was investing for the future of my kids. So yeah. it was so... It's too sad that from 6 million... 
what you have is 500,000. I don't think set up a panel to investigate you. <laughs> Let's no, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, were one of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, guys, we promise you that this edition will be loaded with sauce, since the taste of the pudding is in the eating. Like liberals will say, we are wet, you verdict. So send in your comments on our social media platforms on Facebook plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. And to catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Remember, Team Advocate is made up of all of us, so let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. Bye. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, terrible. Like a terrible <laughs> strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news.